Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an app like Instagram, which is right here, where you can go upload new images, and then you can also like other people's posts. And as you can see, I put it on a mobile app too. So you're going to get to see how to build a web app and also turn it into a hybrid mobile app and have yourself an app that you can use on your phone by the end of this video. So I hope you guys are really excited about this and let's get right into the video. Okay, I'm gonna start off and just open up the terminal. Go inside here, I'll make sure that the text is big enough so you guys can watch this and you can read the text, okay? So then I'm gonna type in Rails New and then the name of my app, I'm gonna call it Instagram. I might already have Instagram, so I'll just call it Instagram 2. And I'm gonna specify the database option with dash D and I'm gonna set it to PostgreSQL. And I'm also gonna add the CSS option as Tailwind because that's the framework that I'm using for this video. Now, if you're not familiar with any of these technologies, please go and research them a little bit uh, before you watch this video. But also, if you just wanna see how we're able to do this and get this done quick, uh, you can just stay around and then you'll learn the technologies as we go. Okay, so now that the app has been generated, we can CD into the directory, and I'll just go ahead and start the server. Now that means that we can go to the browser and then go to localhost 3000, and we'll have our app started. But you'll see we have this error because we haven't created the database yet. So that's the first thing you do when you create a new Rails app. Uh, you're gonna have to create the database. And now we'll see that we're on the default Rails screen. So this means that everything is working fine and we're ready to start building our app. So the first thing that I want to do is I'll just add a home screen so that when we get to the page, we're not just viewing the Rails logo. So to do that, I can go into the terminal. I'll just create a new tab and I'll generate a new controller. Now I'm going to call this controller the pages controller and I'm going to specify a home action. So you just do that like this by passing in two arguments. The first is the name of the controller and the second is the action. And if you want to do more, we could also have uh, more actions by passing them in here. So we can do a home action, an about page, and then any other additional pages that you might want to have that are just static. So now we can generate that. And we already have the server running in another tab, but we still don't see this. But if we do go to slash pages home, we'll see we do have our page home. Or we have our, <laughs> we do have our home page on the pages home route. But I wanna show this at the root of the application. So whenever you get to the main website, uh, so like Instagram.com, uh, if we go here, well, I'm already signed in, but it would usually show a quick landing page. So that's what we're gonna do. But I'm gonna open up the code now in Visual Studio Code Editor. So you can open up our Instagram too. Now I'm gonna go in here, open up the config folder, routes.rb, and you'll see we have a few different routes that were generated here, but I actually don't want the route to be slash pages, or I don't want it to be pages slash home or pages slash about. So actually I'm gonna delete these and I'll change the route down here. So at the bottom of the routes.rb, there was this piece of line that was, or there was this line of code that was commented out. You're gonna wanna uncomment that and then change this from the post index to pages home because that's where our root in this app is going to be and then also i want to redefine that about page i don't know if we're going to do that in this video but i just want to show you how you can do that so what we just say is get slash about and then we can specify any controller but we're just going to do the pages and the about action so now uh, if we refresh the page we'll see that we start off on the home page and then we actually do have the slash about route now that goes to the about page. So if you wanted to enter in, or if you wanted to add this about page, you could do that just like that or any other pages. So I just want to show you how easy it is to generate a page in Rails. But now that we have the home page, I'm just going to style this up like we do in most of these videos. Just do a little bit of basic styling and add a sign in route or a sign in link, I mean. So let's go and open up the, inside the code. Let's open up the app folder. 
in the views folder and let's go to the layouts and then inside of here we have application.html.erb file and this is where all of our code is going to be rendered so actually we can change some things in here like the title uh, that's what's displayed at the top of the tab uh, we can enter anything like right here it it was squished together, so I'll just add a space between Instagram 2. Maybe I'll do Instagram 2.0. That just kind of looks nice. And then I'm going to focus on the styling real quick. So when I added that tailwind option, it adds this main container, which has styling around it, which might be fine, but uh, it's going to make it harder to style uh, the background of the page. So I'm just going to remove this padding. So I'm going to delete that container. And make sure that you keep the yield and the body just like this because this is important for the Rails app. Okay, now we can uh, leave that file. And let's go and open up the home page. And I'm just going to do some quick styling. So this is what it looks like right now. Just everything's up at the top. Uh, there's not really anything set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this div take up the full width. And then I'm also going to take it up, make it take up the whole height by saying min height. 100 view height, which is the whole page. And then I'm going to add uh, indigo background, which is like purplish blue. Then I'm also going to add flex, flex call item center. Now what that does is it adds display flex and it actually makes the item stack up horizontally. And then the item center makes them go in the center. If we also want to say justify center, it would push them down from the top to actually get into the center of the page. So we might want that too, that's kind of nice. And then if we wanna have, I like having a little bit of offset from the center, just so it's a little bit higher. So we could do some padding just like this to give a little bit of offset, but it's still centered, just a little bit above center. Now we can change this title to whatever we want. So inside of the H1, I'll just change this to Instagram 2.0. And then the uh, description would be whatever we want, but I'm just going to say the new place to share your photos built with Ruby on Rails. Okay, so now we have that. That's nice. We could even make this title a bit bigger and we can make it have a, a light text. Instagram 2.0. And we might want to style this. And if you're not really comfortable with all the Tailwind commands that I'm entering, I don't want to explain all of them, but it's just essentially the CSS put into CSS into inline classes that you can write out really easily. They actually call them utility classes because you apply them one by one. So I'd apply one for the sizing, then I apply one for the color. It just makes it easy to, to go on the fly and to create apps the way that I do this. So you'll see, uh, there's actually, I want to change this so that it's not uh, touching the side on mobile. So for that, I'll just go in here, I'll say text center, and I'll actually do some padding on the left and right, the X axis. And that kind of affects this. So <clears throat> let's add a breakpoint to the text 7XL. Let's say on medium, it goes to that size, but on smaller phones, it could be a little bit smaller. There we go. So that looks good. And then also for this text, we did text center, but we can also do a max width just to make it take up less space. Oh, 2XL is too big. Max width medium. I'm going to do max width small. So then it forces it to wrap. But I think on larger screens, it could be a, a bigger, like 2XL just so it can take up the whole space. It's also gave it a little bit of margin because I don't want it to be touching the Instagram 2.0. There we go, we did all that styling and now we have this simple landing page. And right underneath, I'm gonna add the link to sign in. But first we need to add in the gem for user authentication, which is gonna be the device gem. So what we'll do is we'll go back into the terminal and let's actually stop the server because we're gonna need to restart it eventually when we since we're adding device but then simply all we have to do is add the gem so we can type in bundle add device press enter let that add the gem for us
All right, now that that's now that the gem has been added to the app, we can run Rails G Devise install, which is crucial to installing all of the code for Devise. So it's taking it from the gem and it's adding it into our app when we run this command. So that's really important. Make sure that you run that and then it'll give you some steps that you have to do afterwards. So one of them is make sure to configure the default URL for mailers. So that's to make sure that the emails are getting sent properly. Uh, that's important. So we can do this later, but if you want to see what that looks like, just go into the config folder, initializers, or wait, not initializers, environments, development.rb. And see, there's not anything that's setting the default URL options. We do it here. And then also when you go to push to production, so for your live website, you would also do this, but you would change it from localhost to be the name of your site. So mine would be you know, Instagram, but it wouldn't look like this. It'd be like HTTPS Instagram.com. And then we wouldn't even specify a port for this because we're just using a domain. But it would look like this for production. For development, it just looks like this, but we actually don't need to do this. So if you're watching this video, you don't have to do this step. It's not important until we go to production. Then the second part was making sure to have a root. So we did that. Third is having flash messages, which you don't. So we can copy these flash messages from here and go add those into the application. So inside the layouts folder in the views and the application file, we're going to render a new partial. So I'm going to render layouts alerts. And now we have to go and create that partial in the layouts folder. We're going to create a new file called underscore alerts.html.erb. Now inside here, we're going to put the code for these two alerts. Just like that, we're done. We're displaying this alerts on the top. And we could also style these more because right now they don't have any styling. But if we wanted to, let's say, make the notice have like a green color, the alert have a red color, uh, we could actually do that pretty simply by let's give this a green text, let's give this a red text. And then we probably want to do so. What I'm doing is I'm just going to add a background on it, then I'm going to make it take up the whole width. I don't really know how this is going to look yet. And then adding some padding. Okay, so the server's off. Okay, that's fine because we're still doing the device part. Uh, the next step is to generate the views, which you don't have to do it. But if we want to override the views to make it look a little bit prettier, uh, we're going to want to do this because the default sign in page for device is actually really ugly. So let's generate the device views. That's just going to add all the view files into our app. So if we go into the app and we look at the views folder right now, there isn't any device folder, but that command right there will add it. So now you see we have a device folder where it has all the different files that we can update for the sign in page and the registration page. Okay, now that we've done this, the last thing that I'm going to do in the terminal is just generate the device user model. So to do that, we can type in Rails G device and then the user model. And I'm just going to run this and it's going to create that model for us. And it's also going to add the routes and set up everything with device for the user model. So you see it created that. Now we can migrate the database. I don't know why it's being kind of slow right now. That's strange. <clears throat> Shouldn't take this long to migrate a database. Okay. So now that we migrated the database, we can start the server again with a bin dev. I'll go to localhost. Again, I don't know why it's being slow. I got to look into my computer to see, see about that. But anyways. Let's open up uh, the server again, 
Should be working. We have the home page. Oh, <laughs> so now we see the styling from the alert actually because because of my padding, even if there's not text, it'll always show up. So how we can fix this is let's add a condition around each of these alerts and we'll say if flash notice dot present. So actually in Rails, uh, the notice and the alert is stored on the flash object. So that's why we're able to check this in the view. If the notice is present, then show the notice. And we can do the same condition, but we'll change it to if the alert is present, then we'll show this code. And then you could style these however you want. You could use uh, components to make these look better. But we're just doing a really simple green or red alert. Okay, so now that we have everything set up, we don't see any uh, links right here, but we can go in the browser URL to user sign in. And we'll see that we have a sign in page. Like I said, the device sign in is pretty ugly. So that's why we'd want to at least style it a little bit to make it look better. What we can do is on this home page, let's add a link to sign in. So to do that, we can go to the home page and let's just add it right underneath uh, the description. So add a link to sign in. This is going to go to the new user session path. And now I'm going to just do some styling uh, with Tailwind. Let's make it a blue button and I'll do some light blue text, add some rounded, some padding. See how that looks. Okay, a very simple sign in button. I usually like to do rounded full actually, so that makes it have the full rounded edges. And then we could also give it a little bit of width so it's just uh, thicker. Whoops. If you do that, uh, it's a little thicker, but now the text is on the left, so I think we can do text center. I should put the text in the center. Okay, perfect. So we have this little sign in button. Now it's kind of close to this. We could either do margin. Uh, let's change this from the margin top to margin Y, which means top and bottom. So now it pushes off the sign in button a little bit. So now we see this nice sign in. Uh, if we click on it, we go to the sign in page. So I'm gonna quickly add some styling just to center this. And to do that, we can go open the code, go to the device folder, the sessions, and the new.html.erb. Inside of here, I'll wrap all this code in a div. And on here, I'll give it a max width. I'll tell it to take up the whole width. Then I'll do margin X, which will push it into the center of the page. And then also some margin top. And then I'll give it a simple background color just to distinguish it. And I'll do some padding. Now, if we reload the page, It'll go from that to this, which mm, it's a little bit better, you know, it's pushed in the center, but I also want to center these items. So up here on that div, we can go flex, flex call, item center, which will push all of them to the center, but it will also keep the styling. And then just like this, we already have a, a little bit nicer looking login page. If we go on mobile, um, well, the background doesn't look great. But we could always add a breakpoint that we don't have that on there, but then we go up and it adds on a larger screen. And then if we wanna change the signup page, because right now the signing signup page is ugly too, let's just copy that div, go over to the registrations and the new registration, and then we'll just wrap this whole thing with a div. Reload, and we'll see we have our slightly better signup page where it's just at least centered. So now if I'm gonna sign up as a new user, uh, we'll see we have a few things, but we don't have an option for username, which that's pretty crucial for Instagram because you have your email, your password. Well, actually you can sign in with a few different options. Uh, so we might cover that in future videos using OmniAuth. because That's actually really simple. But for this video, let's just use email, but let's also add a username. So to add a username, I'll go into the console and I'll do a new migration by typing real stream migration, then I'll call it add username to users. And I'll just say a username is type string. So you can just put it, you don't have to add any option because by default it's type string. So now that I did that, 
it will create the migration. Then we can migrate the database. Oh, I don't know why it's going slow. Oh, my computer. Oh, my computer's about to die. Whoa. That's probably why. Okay, I'm gonna, I need to plug in real quick. Hey guys, so quick update. I guess my computer was on low battery. So I really hope the video wasn't laggy. Uh, even right now, it seems a bit laggy. So I really hope it was okay. Okay, I just restarted my computer and plugged it in. So it should be better now. Uh, I wanna see where we left off. I go back to the local host. Oh, now I'm getting, <laughs> that's weird. Now my Postgres isn't working. Okay, I'm pretty sure I found the solution to this. So if any of you have this issue, don't lose hope. All you have to do is delete the Postmaster PID, which apparently is inside of the system volumes data op to homebrew. And if we LS, oh, we have to go into the var folder. Inside of here, there's a few different ones, but we're looking for PostgreSQL at 14. If you go in there, there's a Postmaster PID, which I guess since we, since I turned off the computer while the server was running, it caused some sort of glitch where uh, the PID just was outdated. But that was kind of a detour. But now that we did that, we should be good to go. If we go back into our Instagram too, let's just make sure that the database is migrated. Okay, perfect. So it is working. We can start the server up localhost and everything's fine perfect so now we're back to that part where we added the username so we actually do have the username field but we don't we're not showing it on the sign up page so to do that we can go into the views folder device registrations new and then we just have to add a field for username so we can do this right on top of the email I don't know if we want to have it below the email, probably on top. That's usually how it is. And we could do f.label username. And I'll add a br just to have some space. And then we can do a text field for the username. And then let's move the autofocus to up here. So this is going to be the first one to be selected. And we can also do autocomplete the username. Now, if you refresh, we'll see there's a username field. But when we uh, try to create the account right now, this isn't going to get saved unless we add this additional piece of code uh, to override device. So we have to go to the controllers and the application controller. And then we have to add this piece of code here. So I'm actually going to pull it from... just did an app like this on X. So all we need to do is drop this small piece of code, which is adding a before action, configure the permitted parameters if it's the device controller. What that's gonna do is it's gonna add to the signup keys, the username field, which will allow us to save the username right here. Now that we've done that, we should be all good to go. And let's try to create our new user. So I'm gonna be the first first guy to be on here. Let's add a quick email, password, and then we can sign up. Okay, so everything works nicely. Oh, I see the alert up here. Oh, but actually the text, I think I accidentally did the same color for the alert as the text. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> text green 500 and bg green so actually i want the background to be darker and the text to be lighter that's my fault just so that they can stand out from each other oh we're not going to be able to see that anymore because we're already signed in but i want to show some some way that we know that we're signed in so let's quickly add a nav bar to the top so to add a nav bar we can go back into the code go into the app folder the views the layouts folder and here's where we're going to add the nav bar into the application.html.erb we're actually going to render it right above the alerts so the alerts would show up under the nav bar 
So we can render a partial called layouts navbar. And then we're gonna have to create that new file in the layouts folder. We'll create a file called underscore navbar.html.erb. And inside of here, we'll add the code for our navbar. So I'm gonna make this take up the full width. Let's do height of 16. Let's also make it sticky and top zero. So that means it's always gonna to stick to the top. And then for the background color, I'll just make it a, a, a darker gray. Okay, and then on one side, there's gonna be a link to home. This will just go to slash, which is the main uh, root of the application. And we can add a little bit of styling just to make the text uh, bigger and lighter. So we're gonna have on one side, we'll have home, and I'm gonna add styling of flex justify between on the navbar, which means it'll push the two links apart and an item center, which will center them horizontally. So on the left, we'll have link to home. On the right, we'll have, actually we'll show the user that they're signed in. So I'm just gonna do a quick div. Gap. We'll just say, uh, well inside here, we don't, even, we don't want this link. We're just gonna do a condition if current user If there is a current user, let's just show the current user username. Because then we can check if that got saved correctly too. Okay, perfect. So we actually see it on the right side. And then we see the home. I'm gonna quickly add some padding. Because as you can see, the links were just touching the side. But if we add some padding on the X, it looks a little bit better. So now that we're uh, signed in, we actually don't want to see the home page anymore as a signed in user. We want to just see the page, like our main feed page with all the posts. So to do that, we can go into the routes.rb and we can add this piece of code. We can say authenticated user do, and then we'll set the new root for whenever the user is logged in. So I'll actually put this down by the by the main root. So the main root we go to the pages homes, and then whenever they're authenticated, they'll get directed to the post index, which we don't have a post index yet. So I'll generate that, and I'll take advantage of the scaffold command in Rails to create the post, which is going to have a whole uh, form and it's gonna create all the pages to view the posts. So I can just type in Rails G scaffold post. Now a post, if you think about it in Instagram, what does a post have? It has an image. Well, actually it has multiple images, but for this video, we're just gonna keep it limited to one image just to keep it simple. But we might make, we might change it to have multiple images and then have the carousel just like there is an Instagram. But for this one, I'll just do a single image we can add an option image attachment, but it's easy enough as just saying images and then changing it to attachments. And you can also do this easily in the model because I'll show you what this generates. But we say RailG scaffold post image attachment, and then we'll give it a body. And the body will be type rich text. Now the reason why I'm doing rich text, we could also do just type uh, text and that would just be blank text. But rich text allows you to change the text and style it, make it bold. Although Instagram doesn't let you do that. So we might just want to keep it as a regular text field. But for this app, since we're in Rails, we might as well use rich text because that's kind of cool. So it has the image, it has the body. It also is going to belong to the user. So we can add a user belongs to. Just like that, we can create that model, migrate the database, and then start the server again. And now when we refresh, we'll see that we're actually on the post page and we go click new post. Oh, we get this error, action text does not exist because for action text and active storage, we need to run the command to add those. Just real quickly, uh, you need to do this when you're adding these libraries. So we say rails action text colon install. And when you run this, it adds all the different files that we need for both action text and active storage. And then we can run Rails DB migrate. 
restart the server and everything will be working correctly. Now let's see, we have this form to create new posts. We can add an image, a body, and then there's this uh, field for user. So we want to get rid of this because we don't want someone to be able to change the user in the form. This is just added because of the scaffold command. So to remove this from the form, just real quickly, we'll go into the app. Uh, we'll open up the app folder, the views, and the post folder. And inside here, we can go to the underscore form file and then find that user ID option and just completely delete that. So now when we go back, we only see the image and we only see the body, but we also want to not permit it in the controller just in case we don't want any user to be able to hack the site. So let's open the controllers, the post controller, scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see the post params option where it's permitting which parameters the user can update. And we want to remove the user ID. So this will bring back the security. Now they can only change the image in the body, just like we want them to. And while we're in the post controller, let's also update how the post is saved. So if we go to the create option, or if we go to the create action, we'll see that we have this post being set by post.new. But to make this save it on the user, we can change this to current user dot post dot new. So a post is equal to the current user dot post dot new. And also uh, up at the top, let's make sure that to go to the post page, a user has to be signed in. So we can set a before action, verify authenticity. Actually, I kind of forgot what it's called. Uh, please ignore my terrible spelling too. It's just because of the type of uh, keyboard that I'm using. Okay, so just simply authenticate user. Before action authenticate user. When we add this, now it's gonna require the user to be authenticated, which we already are, so we're able to view it. And now when we create this post, it should set it off the user. Uh, but the one thing we need to change is, right now the user doesn't have the posts. It doesn't know about them because we haven't updated the model. So if we go into the code, we go into the app folder models and we open up the post.rb. This is what was generated by doing the scaffold. So we got a post model that belongs to user, has rich text and has one attached image. So you'll see uh, the important thing about the uh, associations is that the post belongs to a user. But if we open up the user model, we don't see anything about posts. So that's why it doesn't know about it, but we can add that link by saying has many posts. And now these are set up correctly, which will uh, make the post controller work when we say current user .post new. So now it'll save it to the user. So what that looks like is we can go and create our first Instagram post. Say this is a cool image. Create my post. And just like that, it got created and we'll see that we're viewing the posts, but there's a few things that we wanna change. Like we have the image, but right now it's just the option to download it. We have the body, which is just kind of displayed like this. And then the user, it's actually just displaying the ID. So let's change up this partial so that it actually looks a bit more like Instagram. So let's open the code. Let's go to the app folder views, the post folder and the underscore post file. Now inside here is where we have all of our different options and I'm just gonna start updating this. So instead of having this just say image, uh, we can delete this. Let's not have as much margin on this, so I'll, I'll crank it down. And then instead of a link, I'll do an image tag for the post.image and no file name needed. We're just gonna go to the post.image. And I'll delete that um, second part but we can leave this uh, condition if it's attached because that's going to protect us just in case someone didn't add an image, which we could also add a validation to say an image is required, which we probably want to do that. So what that means is right now, if you create a new post, you're not actually forced to add an image or a body. So we can just create a post, like an empty post, but Instagram doesn't allow you to do that. So we don't want to do that either. 
Actually, I want the option to delete this, but it doesn't look like... Oh, wait, there is option. Okay. Just like that, we could delete it. So, yeah, what I want to do is... I want to make sure that the person has to add an image and a body. So, to do that's pretty easy. We can do that from the model. So, if we open up the code, we go to the models folder, post.rb. We can add this option, validates presence of. And then we'll say image and body. So, those two options. Now, when we go... We can't create a post unless we have an image and a body. This is my correct post. But now if we do it right, we can post it. Now real quickly, I'm going to add the rest of the styling for this post partial. So for that, let's go back to that post partial in the fuse folder, post in the underscore post file. So right inside of here, we'll see we're displaying that image, which is perfect. But then we have the post body and we, we have this key. I don't really want the descriptive key. We can just have the post body. And then also down here, we're saying the user. I'm gonna delete that. Or actually we'll say, instead of this, we'll say posted by, and then we'll say post.user.username. Post we create down the margin. And also I'll make this flex. Add a bit of gap. So see what that looks like. This is my uh, correct post posted by this guy. Oh, it looks like there's a bit too much gap. Oh, and also this one had margin. Oh, and block. So let's get rid of that and let's crank down the gap a little bit. Now see, this is my first post. Oh, we can also make this bigger. So the body section. Let's make that a bit bigger so it stands out. doesn't look like it's affecting it oh because it's this is a tricks content uh, so that's kind of is an issue is we uh, it's harder to style this the post body because uh, we can't just <laughs> change that so we might want to change it back to a text field but that's not an issue for me just leave it like that and let's go back to the home page so this is already kind of looking like Instagram because we have the feed where we can scroll down. But one thing we could do is center these posts real quick. So to do that, I'll go to the post page, the index.html, and I'll start working on centering it. So I'll add a max width and then some margin on the left and right. Okay, so that's good. And maybe a little bit of margin top just to push it down. So we have this post at the top, but what I want to do really is center the the post in the middle. So for that, we'll go to the, where we're rendering the posts and we'll make this have a smaller max width. And then we'll just center it like this. Oh, we have to get rid of this option, min width full. So yeah, now you can see we're centering it. And then actually I probably don't even want the, the max width on the, on the, the post part. I don't really care about that. Although we might want to have it at least a little bit just so that the posts and we probably don't want to have, you know, this text at the top. Anyways, we probably just want to have the pictures. So that's probably a more accurate way of doing it. And then maybe up on the nav bar, there could be the new post link, but I'm not really going to worry about that too much right now. One thing we do want to worry about is we have this option to show the post, which we might just want to have that be like when you click on the image, it shows the post. And also we have the option to edit it, but this will show up to all users. So I'll show you what that means. If I go and create, or if I go and open incognito and I go to the app and let's just sign in as another guy. Whoops to confirm my password okay so we created we signed in as another guy but we still have the option to edit it which we really don't want to display the option to edit this person's post if i'm not the user so to change that we can go into the post folder the underscore post partial and we'll just see inside of here inside of here we have this condition if action name not equals show and then we have 
the link to edit. So in here we can say if current user not equal to post.user. Or no, we'll say if current user is equal, then we're gonna display the edit. Otherwise we wouldn't. And what that looks like is when we reload on the first guy, we still have the edit link. But when we reload on the other user, we no longer see that. We just have the option to show it. Although if, when we get to the show page, we still have the edit destroy. So let's get rid of that real quick. I'll just copy this condition and I'll go into the show page. Uh, you'll see we have the edit destroy. So I'll wrap this in the condition here. So if current user equal to at post .user. Then we show these two links. Otherwise we only show the back to post. That's probably what we want to have happen. So now as uh, the first guy, we can edit it, but as this guy, we can't, we can just go back and we can show the post, but we don't have the option to edit it for them. Then as this guy, we can create our own images and then we'll see the option. This is already really exciting. We made a lot of progress very quickly and we have this simple type of Instagram app where we can display all the posts. Oh, one thing I just saw was so this one was uh, recently created, but for some reason it showed at the bottom. So we actually want to display these uh, from newest to oldest. So we want the newer post to show up at the top. So to do that, we can go into, I'm going to quickly close the code because I don't like looking at all these files. So I'm going to, I'm going to collapse all the directories because the Rails app, I mean, there's a lot of different folders, but over time you get used to it, but I still like to collapse it just so I can go into the file that I need. So right now what I wanted to do is I wanted to show the newest posts. And we're gonna ch do that by going into the app, the controllers folder and the post controller. Now in here we have an index action. This is where we're displaying all the posts on this post page. And you'll see that we're setting the posts equal to post.all, which this is just gonna use the default ordering which I think is going from the lowest ID to the largest ID, which actually means that the, the newer post would show up later because they have a higher ID. But to change that, let's order it and we'll do it based on the created app. And we can do created at descending, which means it'll show the newest post first before it shows the older post. So now if we go back to the home page, we have this guy's new post shows right up at the top and then it goes down in order. Another thing we might want to do is show when it's posted at. So we have posted by, but we could add another field underneath that says posted at. So to do that, we can open up the app, go into the views folder, posts, and then we're going to go to the underscore post .html thing. And inside here, I'll just copy this code here uh, for the posted by, just cause I'm gonna change it slightly do posted at and then inside here we'll say the created at and uh, to get this to display right we need to say surf time and then add uh, the correct surf time and what surf time is it's a way to visualize dates so whenever I do something like this I go and use a surf time generator this just makes it easier oh and I like to look up the one for Ruby because just better it looks like this and then we can add any date we want so I'm not sure how Instagram does it but just say like January 1st we want it the link to look like this all we have to do is copy this code here put it in the surf time and now it's gonna format our date correctly so we have posted at this uh, maybe we want the time like the hour minute So again, you can do this any way you want, but maybe I'll do it like this. 5 p.m. January 1st, 2024. Okay. We'll copy that surf time and we'll drop it right in here. So now it shows exactly when it was posted. This one was 546, this one 541, and so on. So just like this, we were able to create a simple Instagram app. And there is a few more features that we can add, like the liking the post, for example, following users, and then showing 
like on this feed page, we could show only the posts from users that you follow, but then also we could have suggested posts just like Instagram does that. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to add the like button. So we're just going to uh, add this right next to the show link. And to do that, well, we can choose what we want to start with. Let's just display the button first. Uh, so I'm going to go and find an icon. So I'm going to go to heroicons.com because they have a lot of cool icons and they're actually made by the creators of Tailwind CSS. Pretty cool. So you can go and you can choose what you want. So actually we're going to use two of these. We're going to have the outline and then we're going to have a solid for when it's for when you actually are liked it. So let's start with the outline. Let's copy the SVG and uh, how I'm going to store this. There's a few ways that you could store this because we're going to need to put this in our app somewhere. So I'll show you what that means. But first of all, let's just drop it in. We want to put it right next to the show button. So that's inside the post partial, which is where we are right now, where we added uh, the created at time. So right next to the show, oh, whoops, I had the wrong thing copied. So let's go back, copy that SVG. Wait, why didn't it? It's not working. Some sort of glitch or something, I don't know. Okay, copy SVG. Okay, there we go. Copied it. Uh, I think that's something that Hero Icons or Tailwind CSS needs to fix, right? But that happens. They might be using React or something. Okay, so now we can see we have this heart icon right here. But I probably want to make it a little bit bigger. So if we go in here, we'll see it's actually using uh, Tailwind to say width 6. Let's upgrade that to width 10. That'd be slightly bigger. And now I don't want it to be on top of the show post. I want it to be uh, vertical. So for that, let's just wrap all these actions in a div class flex. Do item center and we'll add just a bit of gap between each of the links. Now also, I'll move out this HR so that it's uh, just at the bottom. The HR is like the line. See, there's this little line. But I still want to have that. So now when we reload, we'll see we have the, the heart button right next to show. And actually, let's delete the show because um, I don't really think that makes sense for this. We don't want to be able to... Like, usually you don't go to view the whole post. Unless you're going to go and look at the comments or something. So let's not worry about that now. Let's just show the, the heart button. And then we want to be able to like it. So right now, it's just a plain SVG icon. Uh, it doesn't have any logic behind it. So to turn this into a working like button is actually pretty easy. So for that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the terminal. And I'm going to start off by creating that like object. So I can do Rails G model like. Now a like is going to belong to a post. So we'll do a post belongs to. It's also going to belong to a user. So do user belongs to. And that's really all the data that a like has. Now that we did that, we can migrate the database. Start the server again. Uh, there's really not any difference. So now we need to add uh, the route for the likes. So for that, I'm just going to go into routes and I'm going to nest it inside of the post. So what that means is we're going to have a route like here. I'll just do a comment real quick. We'll have a route like slash posts. It would be like post number five likes. That's how we'd create it. So I'm going to do a scope module posts. And then we'll do a resources likes. We'll just say only create. So this will set up the route just like this. And then the reason why I did scope a module is so that it nests it inside of a folder and a module. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if we didn't do scope, then in the controllers, we just do a uh, likes folder in the main directory. But since I scoped it to the post module, we actually need to put it inside of a post folder. And then inside of here, we do the likes controller. And the reason why I'm doing this is I feel like it just kind of cleans it up and it we know that there's a likes controller inside the post folder uh, it's just kind of easier at least for me I like to organize my code like this and then we're gonna inherit from the application controller 
we're going to give it a create action. Now inside of here, we're going to be able to find the post by the params post ID. Now the reason being because we nested it in the post URL. Whenever we are going to access the likes path, we have to pass in a post, which will then we'll be able to access it through the post ID param. So now we're getting the post and we could say post.likes create and the user would be current user. We could either do it like this or we could say current user dot likes dot create and the post ID is at post ID. I'll probably do it like this, but we also have to remember to add those associations to the models because when we do those generators in the terminal, it only updates the model that we did it for. So like when we created the like model, it updated it with belongs to posts, it updated it with belongs to user, but it didn't up update the respective models. So we need to do that. So in the posts.rb, we'll have to add has many likes. And I like to keep the associations at the top between uh, the validations. You don't have to do this, but this is just personal preference. So up at the top, we have all the associations. Then we have the validations, and then we have the rest of the methods on the model. So I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to go and update the user. So right under has many posts, we'll say has many likes. And another cool thing we can do is we can actually say has many liked posts through posts and something like this like so then we can actually get the liked post only so there's some really cool methods we could do in the model we're not going to get to this yet but i just wanted to do a quick demo you can look into that if you want to do something like that but that's further on when you're developing your own social media app okay so now that we have this likes controller we created the like right here so this code right here will be creating a like. And the next thing we want to do is we want to update uh, the like button to show a filled in one. So let's just quickly move this SVG. So right now we have that SVG just right in the page, but I don't like this, how we have it here. So I'm actually going to add a gem called view components, which is going to allow us to create these nice little components that we can store any type of uh, front end logic in, but I'm just going to use it for my icons. So I'll go to the console and I'll say bundle add view underscore component. Just simply add that gem and then I'll say Braille's G component icons. And inside icons, I'm just going to call this the heart outline icon. And I'm going to pass in the sidecar option, which means it'll create it in a nested folder of its own. So I'll show you what that looks like. We can restart the server. Or actually, let's do another component. So we have heart outline. Let's say heart filled, because we're also going to have that one. Now we can start the server again. But I'm going to quickly go into the code, and I'll show you what we generated. So if we go in the app folder, now we have this new folder called components. And inside of here, we have the different components. So what view components does is it adds a class, and it also adds a respective uh, HTML template where you can add any of your HTML code. So for us, we're not going to mess with the class at all, but in more complex components, you could add any logic in here in the class, and then you could use it inside of the template. So this library is really cool, but for us, we're just simply using it for a, just a store in SVG, which you could do this in a partial too. This is how I like to do it. So now I drop the outline inside of this SVG. Let's go and grab the heart filled. So to grab the filled, we'll go to the solid option. We'll copy that SVG. And then we'll go and drop that here in the heart filled component. Now if we go and we reload, well actually uh, we lost the icon because we haven't rendered this yet. So we have those two components created, but let's go and render it in that post partial. So we can go back into the views, posts, and well, the underscore post file. And then we're just going to display it right here. We can render icons, heart outline component. 
dot new and that's how we render uh, icon but as you can see the styling got totally messed up I'm not sure why but let's just wrap it in a div uh, and we'll say width 10 honestly not sure why that why it's taking up so much space but anyways you wrap it in a div and then you have your styling correct right now here it's still not even hiding up when we uh, hover it's not showing up like as it's clickable so to do that I'm gonna wrap this in a link and we're actually not gonna put anything except for the URL and for the URL it's gonna be post likes path and then we have to pass in a post like this and I'm gonna add a block by saying do and now we can wrap our code right here with the icon and make sure to close it off with an end now what that did is it turned it into a link so now this is clickable and when we click it it's gonna make a post to that server and it should actually create the like oh except for right now it's, it's just a regular link but to make it do a post request, it's very easy. We can add this option data turbo method and we'll set it to post, which will make it fire a post request. So now when we click on it, it actually does post to that URL and it creates the like for us. So just like that, we were able to like the post, but it didn't update on the page yet because we haven't added that logic. So to make it update on the page, what we're going to do is we're going to take this link and we're going to move it into a partial. So right here, how we had this link to post and then we have the icon inside of it. I'll copy this and I'll just render uh, like. That's going to be the name of the partial. And then we have to add in the locals for this. So I'm going to do a user, which would be the current user. And I'm going to do a post, which will be the post. OK, so now that we've set that up, we can go create the new file be underscore like.html.irb and we'll drop that code that we had on the show page first or not on the show page but on the post partial so we drop this uh, link but actually we want to have a condition in here that checks so if we can find a like so I'll say if like equals current user dot likes dot where post ID post ID dot last okay so if we can find a like we're actually gonna show a, a solid otherwise well, we're gonna show the outline heart with the option to like it okay so now we have two links but the first one is the same so let's change this so instead of heart outline it's going to be heart filled component and also instead of linking to the post likes path we're going to update this to use the like that we would have found if it exists so we're going to change this to post like path singular and then we'll pass in the like here so now we have two parameters in this link the post and the like and also the data turbo method instead of post it's going to be a delete because when you click on the heart filled, it's actually going to unlike the post, right? We don't have any logic set up for that yet. So we need to go in the routes.rb and where we have this resources likes and we're, we're adding the create action. We need to also allow a destroy action. So now this will work. We're going to have a route to destroy it. We'll be able to click this, but we're still not updating it on the page, right? But we are at least showing it. So we refresh, we'll see that this one's filled in because we did like it. And if we click it, what's going to be wanting to happen is it's going to want to go and destroy it. Uh, but it looks like uh, we had this issue that action destroy could not be found because we haven't added that, right? We can simply add that by going back to that likes controller and adding a destroy action. And a destroy would do similar logic as this except for it would find it and it would destroy it. Uh, but we're also going to need that post. So I'm going to move this, uh, setting the post into its own action, which I'm going to say before action, set post. And I'm going to move this into a method at the bottom inside of a private. This just means it's not a public method. 
like public methods would be able to uh, do things like routes, but this isn't going to have a route. This is just should be private, shouldn't be accessible outside of this controller. So that's what this is doing by setting it in private. So then we have a method set post. It's going to be run before each route because we have it set as a before action. So we're already going to have the post ready, right? And then we, when we get to the destroy, instead of creating a new like, we're actually going to do a where. So current user dot likes where post ID is equal to this. And then we're going to destroy all of them just in case uh, there's more than one like, you know, we can destroy all of them. So let's refresh. And now when we click it, we don't see anything happen. But if we look in the terminal, it actually did go and delete the like. But we're still not having an update on the page. But to do that, it's actually really simple. And since we already have this wrapped up into a like partial, all we're doing is replacing this with a new partial, right? But to do that, we're going to use Hotwire, but we also need some way to target these links. So I'm going to wrap the whole thing inside of the partial. I'm going to add a div where I'm going to set an ID that we can target. So I'll wrap this condition right here with the like and the dislike button. I'll wrap it all in a div with an ID set to DOM ID. DOM ID is a really helpful method that'll create a unique ID for the record that we pass in. So if we pass in, well, let's pass in the post and let's say like, and it doesn't create a unique, unique ID, but it uses the ID, which is already has to be unique. So the ID on the post and it sets, sets it as the ID on the element. Yeah, I know if you're not technical, this was a lot of IDs, but you'll get to realize this uh, when you code more, uh, the differences. So there's an ID on the post, there's an ID on the HTML, but they're totally different. Anyways, now that we had that ID uh, set, we can target in the controller. So we go back to that likes controller and in the create action, I'm gonna render turbo stream. And then inside here we'll say turbo stream update then we're going to need to target that dom id post like and then we'll set a partial post slash like uh, we have to specify the full path because we're inside of a different scope because right now it would if we just did a like it would look inside of a post slash likes folder but we can fix that by doing the full path by saying render the post slash like partial, but we also need to pass into locals like we did on the page. So the two locals that we're using in the partial is the user and the post. So the user of course would be current user and the post would be at post. And just as simple as that, we'll be able to do this. Although we we're getting a undefined method DOM ID because it knows about DOM ID in the view, but it doesn't know about it in the controller. Uh, to do that, we can include that method at the top. So that method comes from this class action view record identifier. If we include that at the top, then we'll be able to use it in the controller. Now, if we go and we click like, we'll see that it automatically updates the like. One thing we might want to do is make this red. So real quickly, I'll go into that partial. And we'll go right in here where we have the uh, heart filled component. I'll just say text red 500 and now it'll make it display in a nice red color, which is already looking really close to Instagram. I'm very happy with how far we came on this app, but we still don't have it updating when we click off of it or when we click the dislike. So we can just quickly grab the same code because it's actually going to be doing the same thing, you know, rendering a turbo stream at the end. There's not really anything different here. Oh, except for we're not going to pass. Oh, well, that's not a problem. Yeah, so literally it's going to do the same render turbo stream at the end. But it's either going to create it or dislike it. Or create it or destroy it. So now you can see we can like this as many times as we want. And we'll see over here in the console, we're having the request being sent to create it and destroy the like. This is very easy. And we already have it set up and notice how we can like the different ones. And that's what's cool about DOM ID 
is we have an ID we're targeting for each heart. So we don't have to worry about just only updating one heart on the page. We can actually have as many posts as we want and still update the right one. So this is already really exciting. We have the heart button. I feel like that's one of the biggest things inside of Instagram is showing that heart. But from here, we'd probably want to do things like notify the user that they got a new like because they're going to get really excited when they see, oh, this guy liked my post. And then also we could display the like count. So that's actually really easy to display that like count. We could even do this inside of the likes controller or not the likes controller inside of the like partial. We could display a span and we could show the post.likes.count. Now if we reload, we'll see we have that post count there. Well, that doesn't look the prettiest. So let's add a class flex item center. Just to make it like that. Now if we'll see it actually updates the the count as well. I'm going to reduce the gap a little bit just so it's a little bit closer. And now you can see we can like our posts and it actually updates the count. If we go to another account, I forgot what that other guy's login was. Oh, <laughs> I did the uh, user wrong. Okay, sign up. I just wanna show you how it also works you know, with more accounts. And as more users sign up, your account would just update. Although one thing you saw is it doesn't update on this side because well, each user has their own instance. If we wanted to update the count through broadcasts, we could do that also. It's just a little extra step. Uh, I know you guys probably wanna see stuff like that. Uh, it's super easy, but I feel like we've already done so much in this video. We built Instagram, we got the post showing up, we got the likes displaying so we can like and dislike the Instagram posts. Just like that, we were able to create this whole app from nothing, we created our own social media. Now, the final thing for this video, in today's video, is we're gonna put this on a mobile app so we can use it on the phone. Because right now you'll see that this is built to be a website right now. You know, we're using it in the browser, but how do we take this and turn it into a hybrid app? It's actually really simple. So to do that, we're going to use the Turbo iOS framework. So I'm just gonna quickly open up the GitHub. Here's where they have the documentation that kind of helps you set up. So there's a quick start guide. And I'm just gonna view this to, to get some easy things. So actually the only thing we need is to copy this one file. So it makes it pretty easy. And we also need to, we'll add the Turbo iOS. So I'll show you how we do this. So let's close out of that. And let's open up Xcode. So if you're not familiar with Xcode, this is the library that's built in with Max to create um, iOS apps. So what we'll do is we'll click create a new project. Then we'll click on app and we'll name the product. So for us, it's gonna be Instagram 2.0. Now, when you first started, uh, your team will be none, but you need to make sure that you have a team set up if you're to get your app working or else you'll get some issues. So make sure that you go and create a team and set it up. I think it's just your iCloud ID. You need to sign in and maybe specify some things. Now, the next thing we're going to make sure is that the interface is set to storyboard and the language is Swift. Now we can uh, create next. We can create this app. And then we're going to see that we're inside of the app. Now we need to add the Turbo iOS framework. So you can go over here, make sure you're on the main uh, tab, then click on project, make sure you're not on targets, click on the project option. And up here, there's package dependencies. Click on that and then press the new icon. And now we're gonna paste the URL for the Turbo iOS framework. Oh, it's actually, <laughs> this is weird. Why is it asking me for my GitHub? Oh, okay, there we go. So you saw we just pasted in the URL to the Turbo iOS GitHub framework. We can add that package. It'll add Turbo iOS to the Swift app. And this is the first step to getting it to work. So we added Turbo iOS. Now we need to go inside of here 
and we'll see we have that scene delegate so this is the one that uh, they had a, a file to override just to get it set up so I'll copy this code here and then I'll go and paste it in the scene delegate and this is the basic code that will get uh, this app working so you see it visits this URL and then there's a few other things like it sets up uh, the whole navigation view I'll talk about this more and I actually have a video where I go into more detail on how to build a turbo iOS app but the main thing we want to notice there's a URL here right it's going to the turbo native demo we want to change this to localhost so instead I'll do HTTP localhost 3000 and now let's just start it up and I think this should already work just like this So you can just simply press the start button and it'll start up the simulator. If you don't have a simulator yet, you might have to install it, but I think that's pretty easy. Uh, you just go up here and you make sure you have one that you can install. So now we're starting the simulator and it's trying to open up our app. I just want to see what it sees. Uh, it doesn't look like it's seeing anything yet. Did I miss a step? Hmm. No, I think we got everything down. Let me just make sure that uh, you can do it with localhost. That might be the issue. Let me check on my other apps. WaveCloud is my actual live app that I built. This is what helped me learn Turbo Native. I've already built a pretty big app. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff going on. I just need to see. Wait, so we should be able to do it with localhost. So that is correct. I don't know why it's being annoying. Oh, no, it just took a second. So yeah, look, if we go and open up our app, we see we have Instagram right here and we're able to sign in to an account. Oh, except we're going to sign up. So we'll click sign up. Sign up for that account. Boom. Just like that. Oh, and then one thing, uh, there's actually, it's adding this back button, which I really don't like because, well, the back button is going to go back to the sign in and yeah, that doesn't make sense, right? So let's get rid of this back button real quick. That's not good. So where that back button's coming from is it's actually coming from this visitable view controller. And I have some examples of how to change this, but what we can do is, so we're gonna move these two lines right here, right? The view controller and the navigation controller. We're gonna move it up to here in the scene. So this is when the scene is first created. We're going to let view controller instead of this to uh, instead of visible view controller, we're going to set this to web view controller, which we don't have a web view controller, but we're going to create that class. So we'll create a new SWIP file. We'll call it web view controller. Now quickly. I just want to reference my uh, my Wave Clouds app, but a Web View Controller just simply has this code right in here, and then the title would just be the name of your app. And that's what's going to be displayed at the top. But the overriding this means that we don't show that back button because that back button was a part of the visible view controller that we just deleted. So now we just have the session visit. And we're passing in view controller. Instead, we want to just say the visit the view controller. Uh, we can pass. Oh, we're set it here. Actually, we want to move let view controller to outside. So we have access to it here. And then inside of here, we'll say the view controller dot visitable URL is equal to the URL. So if you saw what I did, I basically just moved some of this code around so that the view controller is on the outside. And the reason being, I'm pretty sure how Turbo works. Well, before we were creating a new view controller, 
or a visible view controller recreating one of those for each page that we're loading, which is why it had the whole history stack because it had all the different view controllers. But right here, we changed it to just use one. So that's why there's no history or back button, although we can make our own if we needed to. Anyways, let's start this up and we should see that the app's a little bit different because it won't have that back button. Perfect, so we see it, uh, we're gonna need to sign in again, but now we don't have that kind of annoying back button. Now we can sign up and we could just get right to favoriting other people's posts. Now, one thing you'll see that uh, looks really bad is the nav bar. Uh, this isn't good, you know. When we scroll, it's it's over it's it's showing up over all of our posts. So what we'll probably want to do is we'll just want to remove this whenever we're making a request with a Turbo Native app. So to do that, we just need to add. Right, it's right here, the configuration. So if we go back in here, so right in the session section, we need to say a configuration, and then we can add in the application name. And then we could pass in the web view configuration is this configuration. And I think we have to Uh, just import either WebKit or UI kit. I think WebKit. Okay, so now that's working. Uh, is there anything else? It looks like. Uh, no, that's we don't need the script message handler not yet. So that's if we want to send messages from our app, like from the JavaScript or something, to the iOS code, but we don't want to get into that yet. So the only thing that I added was this configuration, which passes in this text. And that way we can check uh, in the Rails app and we can, we can uh, display, we can display the nav bar only if it's not a turbo native. So what that'll look like is right here in the application file where we're rendering the nav bar, we'll say, well, we could say unless turbo native. And now this turbo native method We'll define it in the application controller. So we can just do it up here. Turbo native. Or actually what we can do is we can add it into a helper method. Even better. Let's just go into the application helper. Let's add a method for turbo native. So to add this method, I just created a method called turbo native. And I'm checking for the request user agent if it includes turbo native. Okay. And then now this should work as we expect it. So let's go back to the simulator. So we might have to refresh the app just so that it passes in the right uh, name. Perfect. And just like that, you see, we don't see the nav bar anymore. And if we go and sign up, let me just make sure that's unique. Sign up, we no longer see that nav bar. Uh, we just see this, and then we can even go create a new post, add an image and a body. So already we have a walking skeleton of the Instagram app. From here, we might just wanna add a native tab bar, which is pretty easy. And then we could have it, have an option for like the home, upload, and then maybe profile. I actually have another video on my channel about how to add a tab bar and to make it interact with your app so you can have the tab bar buttons navigate to different places in the app. So if you wanna watch that, go check it out on my channel. It's called how to add a tab bar to your hybrid app. A very good video. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We got everything set up. We have our whole mobile app working just like Instagram. We can like, we can dislike. Uh, we didn't add comments yet just for the sake of time, but that's pretty easy. You know, to do that, we could even scaffold it like we scaffold the post, we could scaffold a comment model and then just display it, display it based on the post underneath here. But you already saw how we did that very easily. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas for 
new apps that you want me to build, please leave that down below. But I hope you found this really interesting.